All right, it's time to talk about eighth notes. And this is going to change the way we do our counting, which is kind of fun, I think. Um, actually, this is my favorite method of counting because you see eighth notes a lot and everything is sort of flexible around this. But um, so eighth note looks eighth notes look like this. And this is when they're all bunched together. You see there we have it's got a filled in note head. It's got a, a stem that comes up and, and then it has one one sort of thing on the top. Now, if we were to get rid of all of these here. We got a whole bunch of other stuff that shows up, but you also notice that this like little, what is called a flag is like more, actually more elegant looking. So let's undo that and put that stuff back. And the way I like to think about it is if we had taken a pair of scissors and like literally like cut this ribbon right here and this just floated down elegantly and that would be our eighth note. So you might see, it's very common to see eighth notes that look like this with the stem right across um, and you know, they could be in different locations and this, this stem might like look a little different, might be at an angle. Uh, I mean, the, the, the flag might be an angle. And don't worry about it so much. If you see it like that, you're going to play it at like eighth notes. If you see it like this, you're still, it's still an eighth note. And the way to think about eighth notes, uh, you notice that right below here, let me undo that again, right below here in the bass, um, the bass clef, I put four quarter notes and you notice that these fit I was able to fit a total of eighth notes in here before it went into the next measure, and I was able to fit four quarter notes. So if you're clever, or even if you're just paying attention, you can see that you can fit two quarter notes into the space of one eighth note. And if you're mathematically inclined, that probably pretty much makes sense to you. So if I were to play this bottom measure, all right, well, maybe I will. It sounds like this. One, two, ready and go. So that would be my four quarter notes. And if I were to play the, the first measure right, uh, the, the treble clef, it would sound like this. One, two, ready and go. Okay, so basically you notice these are played twice as fast. Um, now, to count this accurately, so when we're just playing the same note and the, the same pitch and the same rhythmic value, it's, it's not so hard. We just go ding, 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 we keep it going. But eventually we're going to need to do some fancy stuff. So the way we're going to want to count this from now on is to count one and two and three and four and. So before we were counting one, two, three, four for each quarter note. And now we need to basically jam something in between the middle there. We need to just jam another note into the middle and we need to count that. So instead of going one, two, three, four, we're going to jam one and two and three and four. We just break up what we had already counted, the one, two, three, four, into a smaller chunk. So now we're, we're basically, the way we're counting, we're counting, we're, we're dividing this measure into eight little pieces instead of four little pieces. So from now on, you're going to count, uh, whenever you see eighth notes, you're going to count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and for each measure. And notice that I said and at the end. A lot of people forget that last and. It's very important. If you're going to break this measure into eight pieces, you definitely need that and at the end. And if you don't say it and you just jump into the next measure, it's going to sound really weird. So that's eighth notes. They look like this. Or they look like the one with the flag, like that. And you're going to be counting them one and two and three and four and.